So our, our final presentation before lunch is, um, <clears throat> is on the case the results of the case program, the DARPA case program. Darren Kofer is a fellow at the Collins Aerospace and a principal investigator for the Collins teams working on DARPA's Cyber Assured Systems Engineering Program and Assured and, and Autonomy Programs. Uh, he will be supported by Todd Carpenter, who's the chief market uh, engineer and co-owner of Adventium Labs and is the principal investigator for the Adventium team working on the CASE program. They will summarize the key technical achievements for CASE. And if you have questions, again, please add them to the Q&A and I'll bring them to the attention of the speakers at the appropriate time. Darren, take it away. Great, can, we, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. Okay, um, so thanks for the introduction. Um, so we'll, uh, 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 I'll start out by giving an overview of the case, uh, the case program and some applications that we did uh, using the tools that we developed, which are called uh, Briefcase. And then I'll uh, run through the AADL modeling and analysis tools for cyber resilience portion of the tools. And then we'll switch over to Todd and he'll talk about the hammer code generation framework uh, for the tools. So uh, first we'll step into the Wayback Machine here a little bit, the origins of some of our, as far as our objectives here, go back to the DARPA Hackums program. And you know, in 2010, 11, 12, that was when people were starting to become sensitized to the idea that uh, uh, embedded systems could have cyber, uh, cyber vulnerabilities, just like our uh, computers and uh, web servers and everything else. Uh, because now they had network connections and what were we going to do about that? And so the, the Hackums program was started to um, uh, see if we could use formal methods to build embedded systems that are resilient against cyber attack uh, because they can be proven not to have the typical security vulnerabilities. Um, and here we're uh, leveraging formal methods, which are uh, a variety of different tools uh, that allow us to do complete exploration of system design using mathematical analysis of the, the, of the system or software model or structure or the, the code itself. Um, so the, uh, indeed we were successful at doing that. The, uh, the, the Cyber Assured Systems Engineering Program was started at DARPA to, uh, I'll say, uh, develop model-based system engineering tools to and workflow to make the Hackums approach repeatable and scalable and more incremental. So the focus in this program is really on this, the tools and workflow that uh, support this, uh, this sort of methodology. So the goals are to, uh, broadly speaking, to allow system engineers to design in cyber resiliency, focusing on uh, automated architecture transforms to do threat mitigation, uh, inserting possibly high assurance components generated from specifications and uh, developing techniques to deal with uh, legacy, le legacy code, hosting them in uh, virtual machines um, that can be isolated from the, from the rest of the system. Uh, the next kind of main te technical goal is to, is to build what you model. And this is really to make a, the, the, the model-based system engineering approach Real. We're going to build the system directly from the detailed, verified AADL model. It's just not. It's not just a, a picture or a communication vehicle, but it really is the um, uh, as 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 we say in ACVIP, the the single source of uh, truth from which we're going to do all of our analysis and test generation and um, uh, synthesis. Uh, and uh, as part of this, uh, we're really targeting the SEL four uh, uh, formally verified secure microkernel as a, a foundational piece of software that we're gonna use in order to um, uh, really guarantee uh, memory safety and isolation properties that we need for cybersecurity applications. And so we want this whole AADL based tool framework to make those um, SEL4 guarantees more accessible to system developers. Uh, finally, as we're doing all of this, we want to provide evidence that we have auto, you know, verifiable uh, reviewable evidence that we've satisfied the cyber resiliency requirements and properties for the system. Um, and so I'll, as we go through the, 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 the development of the system, we're continually creating evidence and documenting that in the form of an assurance argument that can then be uh, uh, produced at the end to integrate all the formal evidence and show exactly how and why the requirements have been satisfied. And as I mentioned, um, if you're familiar with uh, uh, the, the 
ACFIP approach architecture centric virtual integration process is very much the same goals were very well aligned and targeting AADL as our modeling framework. Um, and again, I want to emphasize this idea of building the system directly from a detailed AADL model, because that's what Todd, Todd's going to talk about here after I uh, uh, finish with the first part. Our case team um, includes um, Collins Aerospace working on the, the modeling and tool integration and formal analysis efforts. Um, we also have the University of New South Wales and the SEL4 Foundation folks who are providing and uh, making improvements to the SEL4 secure microkernel. Uh, University of Kansas contributed uh, formally verified remote attestation for distributed computing platforms. Uh, Adventium uh, provided expertise on real time scheduling and AADL modeling in Kansas State. Uh, provided the automatic code generation framework, uh, which is called Hammer and uh, 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 information flow analysis tools. So uh, before we get into the tools themselves, um, let me just say something about some of the platforms that we uh, developed and applied our tools to throughout the course of the case program. So we started out in the um, first and second phase of the program working on this experimental platform, which was based on the AFRL UXAS mission planner. Um, and we developed, of course, a, a bunch of models that are uh, publicly available and some demonstration videos showing how we use the tools to take this unhardened system and satisfy the cyber resiliency requirements and then generate an implementation of that and, and try it out against different, um, uh, different attacks. Uh, in the final phase of the program, um, we applied them to uh, the Collins CH47 uh, avionics uh, system to add a, a secure wireless gateway. We did a live demo in our avionics lab. And then the last uh, platform I'll mention is really a, a really nice self-contained workflow example. It's a very simple UAV software model that can be um, uh, run all on your, you know, uh, uh, without any uh, external uh, hardware, you can uh, kind of work through this uh, uh, this example, uh, 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 adding cyber resiliency properties, uh, modifying it to uh, to address the cybersecurity requirements, generate code um, to run on SEL4, and then execute that on the KeyMu uh, emulator. So there's a tutorial, models, and examples, and everything you need to do that on our, uh, hey, on our Darren. website. Yes, sir. Uh, what was the uh, functionality of that wireless connection on the CH47? Was it for health and usage monitoring or mission planning, or was it just nebulous, some kind of connection there? No, no, there? I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay. All right, Stand by. Um, yeah, so the, the small UAV, this is just kind of to show you what the initial AADL model uh, looks like. And as we transform it, we're, we end up adding all these components in green to do uh, attestation, to filter uh, inputs, to make sure only well-formed inputs come into the system. We've taken the planning software, put it into a virtual machine. We're monitoring the outputs from that uh, and adding a couple of monitors to make sure that the planner is behaving well and hasn't been compromised. And there's a geofence monitor in there uh, as well. So um, again, there's some videos on the, the website that I'll give you a link to that show all that stuff working. Um, in, uh, so this uh, the CH47 example that uh, Alex just asked about, this is we demonstrated this in December last year at the Collins Customer Experience Center in uh, Huntsville, had a bunch of uh, Army folks come over to see that. But as you can see, this is there's a nice cockpit simulation there, and we're running everything on real avionics boxes that you see there in the, uh, the, the upper right. So this is, you know, really building, targeting, running on actual aircraft uh, aircraft hardware. So here's, here, here's um, just an overview of what that, what was going on in that platform to answer uh, Alex's question. Um, so at a high level, this is, this is kind of what we started with. We've got a bunch of uh, components in the avionics system um, that are connected with a uh, digital switch running basically over uh, over Ethernet, and the goal is to extend this to add some wireless connectivity to allow um, uh, you know soldiers in the back of the aircraft to have tablets that can connect and get um, you know upload uh, uh, 
you know, in, in data that they've gathered or receive um, situational awareness information. Uh, the pilot could have a tablet, you know, like a knee pad kind of tablet that's displaying uh, extra information um, from the from the system. Um, and the yeah, so this in, in our scenario here, the soldier tablet is uploading data to this um, uh, this this da uh, data loader uh, data transfer unit database. And the pilot tablet is able to receive uh, display some augmented information from the ADSB system about other um, traffic um, and potentially adversarial traffic in the uh, in the area. So our modification to this starts out by um, changing the network topology a little bit to use this uh, this video processing module VPM to actually repurpose it as a gateway between the lower assurance wireless network and the components. The higher assurance components on the rest of the, the CAS uh, architecture. Uh, so we have running on the, the VPM module um, software that was created by the briefcase tool. So it's doing attestation to measure the, um, the software that's running on the, these tablets to make sure they haven't been compromised, filtering messages going to and from the tablets and monitoring the ADSB traffic that's being sent to the pilot tablet to look for signs of spoofing from, a, from, a, from an adversary. And then we have the um, the remote attestation software running on the tablets as well with all of the baseline tablet software running on Linux and a virtual machine that's hosted on the SEL4 kernel. So both of the, the green components there are running um, SEL4. And so this is kind of a bigger system diagram. So you can see kind of, it's a relatively complex system that we've uh, built here. Um, and so what the attacks that we tested in the, and demonstrated in the lab were you know, the suppose that the soldier tablet somehow gets um, compromised while the soldiers are off the aircraft doing some um, doing doing their mission. They come back. Um, and there's some malicious code that can you know now access this database and delete data or put bad data in it or whatever. Uh, we also imagined um, uh, adversarial spoofing to to throw up some uh, malicious. Uh, aircraft data that would be displayed to the to the pilots to make them you know think that there's you know traffic right in front of them and cause them to divert or delay or change their mission in some way, and so by adding the monitoring software, we were able to detect uh, aircraft that were uh, behaving suspiciously and tag those uh, for the pilots for display, and then uh, measure detect the compromised tablet and then block it from uh, prevent it from accessing this database once we've detected that it was um, uh, compromised. So that's that's kind of the end result of how these tools re were used. Um, this All of the, the tools and uh, many of the models, not the CAS models that I just talked about, but the, the platform, the demo one, uh, the experimental system and the, the tutorial models are all um, on the uh, on our uh, websites, they're open source, you can go play with them now. You can access them through the loonworks.com uh, site or going to our uh, Loonworks uh, GitHub site, either one, they're pointing to the to all the different repos that you need. To, and a nice way to do this is there's a there's a, a, a VM that's been configured, if you're able to download that, that just kind of has all of the software in it all at once. Um, so I'll uh, quickly go through the, um, uh, 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 the briefcase workflow. Um, so there's a lot going on here, but the, the basic idea is that you start with kind of a, an AADL model of the functionality. We have a couple of different um, cyber resiliency requirements analysis tools that we can run. And this, this is, um, uh, you know, you can, uh, this, is, this is related to the, to the previous talk about taking an AADL model and analyzing it for how it might be attacked, what sort of attack trees you could run against it to identify vulnerabilities. Um, we identify those as requirements, then we transform the system architecture to satisfy those identified cyber resiliency requirements, eliminating any vulnerabilities that were identified, uh, and generate new high assurance components from formal specifications or by inserting pre-verified library components, and verify the system using formal methods. This, relies on the agree tool, which was also just uh, referred to in the Kansas State uh, information flow analysis tool, AWAS. Um, then we can check model conformance to standard standards using an AADL linting tool that we've uh, developed. 
and then use the hammer tool to generate the software integration code directly from the verified architecture model targeting multiple operating systems, including the SEL4 um, microkernel, and then document the evidence and compliance uh, in the form of an assurance case using our uh, resolute tool. Um, and uh, if you want to read about this, we have an article that just came out in um, uh, IEEE Security and Privacy. Um, it's called Cyber Cyber Shirt Systems Engineering at Scale. I think it was in the May 2022 issue. Um, so um, uh, that's that's really the the best place to look to get kind of a top to bottom look at what's going on in these tools because it's because it's a lot, um, as you'll see here. So here's a diagram of the 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 tool architecture um, for briefcase. So this, the top part of the diagram is all happening in the OSATE in modeling environment. We of course have an AADL model. Um, we're running our requirements analysis tools on that and using that to feed these cyber transform tools that are basically a set of wizards that help you to address requirements and, and automatically transform the, uh, the AADL model. Then we have a whole bunch of analysis tools that can be run on the model to check different properties and generate the assurance uh, case from that. Then in the bottom half, we have the build environment. So this starts um, with the, the SPLAT tool, uh, which is what we would, would use to um, synthesize code from formal specifications that have been added to the AADL model. And the Hammer plugin, which takes the AADL model and generates um, uh, glue code that's necessary, and um, if you're building for SEL4, the camp keys configuration files. Camp keys is the build system for the for SEL4 that we're we're using. So Hammer automatically generates uh, all of that uh, interface code and the camp keys configuration files. Um, then you may have other. Some of the components may involve handwritten component code um, or pre-verified code. The SEL4 kernel itself is an example of pre-verified code that comes into this system. Um, and then we have pre-verified component code uh, like the attestation components that are all written in um, uh, KCML. So KCML is a, uh, is a basically ML derivative that has a, um, a, a proof emitting compiler. So we've used that for assurance reasons. Uh, so the C code and the uh, KML code and the CAMKey system, all the CAMKeys brings all that together to build a system executable from all these pre-verified components. So all this is being orchest orchestrated by, uh, by our tools. Um, so just quickly going through a couple of the key steps here. Um, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this, this uh, initially what we'll do is there's a couple of plugins we have, uh, one called GearCase, uh, developed by CRA and other um, called Decrypts, developed by uh, Vanderbilt and Dahl. This is all part of the, the case program. Um, and these will take an initial model and uh, uh, read it in and return to us a set of candidate cyber requirements that can be uh, used to address cyber vulnerabilities that were detected um, by running different, uh, the, the, the tools have different methods, but um, uh, CRA is, uh, has kind of an attack tree model that is, it is trying to run against the, uh, the AADL model to look for vulnerabilities. Our uh, import wizard uh, dis displays all these requirements to the user and, and then you can decide what to do with them. You know, do it, is this something I want to address or is it not important? Um, it, can name it, I can tag it for traceability, I can associate it with a formal property. And then importantly, um, requirements that we are addressing in the model get inserted into the model itself as resolute goals in the, the, the GSN um, goal structuring notation for assurance arguments. So we're putting assurance argument goals attached into the model. And what we're going to do through our development process is um, build up an assurance argument to show how we satisfy these goals or requirements. So that's really the next step. Given one of these uh, candidate uh, cyber requirements, um, the, 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 the system engineer can now select from uh, a set of available cyber resiliency transformations to address these uh, requirements. So that could be uh, filtering inputs to only pass through um, uh, 
uh, messages that satisfy uh, meet well-formed properties, uh, monitoring for certain um, uh, good or bad uh, uh, sequences of events that might uh, either indicate good behavior or bad behavior that we want to take some action on, uh, a gate that can be controlled by a monitor as a result, the attestation me mechanism that can measure a remote computer, receive a, a result back and decide whether the software has been compromised or not. Um, virtualization, which is a way of hosting uh, legacy software on a virtual machine that can be isolated from the rest of the system, and then just preparing the system uh, to be compliant with the SEL4 expectations for how to uh, build a system. So um, th there's a wizard that kind of collects a bunch of uh, configuration data from the engineer, and then the tool will automatically transform the AADL model. Uh, so this is just kind of a, an initial uh, set of uh, transformations that could be extended to add um, add new ones. You know, this is a prototype tool that came out of our, our, our program. But in the background, we're also adding, uh, anytime you do one of these transformations to the model, we're adding a resolute uh, assurance case strategy to show how the associated goal or requirement is being satisfied in the model. So here's what that looks like in the, in the background. Resolute will link the cyber transform to the goal as a strategy. And then as the model changes, uh, as we make further changes to it, we can actually detect whether something has been done that would um, uh, invalidate uh, uh, this goal. So when we insert a, a filter, uh, it automatically is check adding um, assurance case sub goals that say that, hey, the filter is still there. It hasn't been deleted. It can't be bypassed in some way and it's been implemented correctly. And then, you know, we can run our uh, assurance argument and generate a, a tree that says whether or not that's been uh, 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 satisfied or not. Um, many of these transforms insert high assurance components. These are um, uh, uh, these each of these has a formal specification that can be automatically synthesized using our uh, SPLAT tool. Uh, it generates KML code that ha the SPLAT has a proof of correctness with it. And then the KML code itself, um, when you compile it, uh, you get a proof that the compiler is correctly uh, uh, produced um, executable code from that. Um, and then other components like the attestation manager come in as pre-built, pre-verified KML libraries that we insert into the, the same system. Um, having done this, we use the agree tool, which was uh, talked about uh, extensively in the previous talk to um, um, uh, analyze the system behavior and show that it is indeed correct. Um, and then finally, uh, once we're happy with the system, we can generate uh, an assurance argument that in integrates all of these, uh, the strategies, the evidence uh, to show how we satisfy all of the cyber resiliency goals, including the, an assurance argument for the build process to show how all that goes together. And we can export this into a, uh, uh, another assurance argument tool that gives us a, a standard um, assurance argument representation as, a, as an nice graphical tree. Okay, so that's all of the modeling part up front. Now I'm gonna hand over to um, uh, Todd to talk about what happens next after we have this model, how do we um, generate code from that? So Todd, all yours. Thank you very much. Uh, mic check, am I here? You're good. Excellent news, and am I now sharing? Yes, you are. Is it a screen of a PowerPoint? Yes. Looks oh, good. fantastic. This is great. You, you okay. did it. Cool. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'll be describing our model-based code generation capability. And these are the results of a very large team effort from multiple organizations and programs. Uh, it's a lot of really cool stuff that's in here. And our basic goal is to build a deployable system from those architecture models, just like the things that we're building with ACVIP, such that resulting system satisfies the requirements that we captured in the model. And KSU's hammer tool is the result of this work. And the really nice thing is those models now that we've built and analyzed and got these properties from, they're not just documentation on the shelf. They're what we use to actually generate the actual system, the deployed system. So hammer's model driven development tool chain emphasizes three layers of development. We start with architecture modeling, analysis and verification. We do all this with AADL. 
And next we do component development of the application logic. And we can do this in multiple languages. We can do it in C, slang, which is a safety critical subset of Scala. And we have also with that a contract verification framework with it. And we can translate the Scala to C and KML that uh, Darren described earlier. And then Hammer takes this inf information and generates software infrastructure code that supports deployment on multiple types of platforms. So these deployments are aligned to the extent possible provided by the platform itself with the ADL runtime semantics. And I'll keep coming back to that um, ADL runtime semantic aspect. So one of our targets is SEL4. And Darren mentioned this multiple times, which is just to run over it again. SEL4 is an open source, high performance microkernel that provides strong time and space separation and is formally verified on several instruction set architectures. So it's doing a whole lot of work for us, the heavy lifting of making sure things are separate in time. So think real time performance and are things following and not stealing time and space separation. So we don't have to worry about memory overflows between threads or between processes, for instance. And a microkernel is basically a bare bones, bare metal context switcher that manages access to hardware resources. And unlike a regular operating system, SEL4 is guaranteed to not crash and it's guaranteed to provide that strict time and space separation on those instruction sets. So we use SEL4 as a rock solid foundation on which to build our assured systems. And SEL4 has a component API called CamKeys that allows us to specify components such as threads and communications. And Hammer provides SEL4 developers with the ability to leverage the systems engineering analysis and support capability that's available in AADL. So Current SEL4 developers gain from this because now they can leverage a system engineering capability and all the system engineering folks can now target a rock solid foundation microkernel. So we start with our well-analyzed hardened architecture model and generate the cam key specification that preserves the semantics from that model. So all the analysis results from the model are sound on this deployed code. And that includes, for example, the information flows, timing, component boundaries, such as that's uh, spatial separation. And this also connects to several of our ongoing programs on which we're developing an environment for building the verified applications. So the behavior code that goes inside these threads. So Hammer can also translate that same model to multiple platforms and support multiple languages. And that flexibility allows Am Hammer to support rapid prototyping as a system is being developed and refined. For example, one possible flow here, and this is what we used on case, we can generate a Linux version of our code, a JVM mockup of the code, and do this to do component functionality. So we can write the application code, make sure that it works. It's in a common development environment on your workstation. And that allows you to capture the message types, the data structures, basic performance, budgeting, do all that in a really common, familiar environment. And then you can start to drop down to the lower levels at the SEL4, say SEL4 running on Kimu, so it's still on your developer workstation, or down at the board level. And again, the nice thing about this is all these different deployments are generated from the same AADL model, and it uses the same application code that the developer developed. So for example, here we have a simple temperature control model of a process that contains three threads. The developer had specified this basic computational structure, including thread properties, such as the dispatch model and the timing constraints, as well as the communications interactions between components, inclu including the ports and the connections and performance requirements on those communications. So the developer specifies the topology of the system and the computational details and semantic properties of what it means to have this thread and how it's supposed to run, including those thread patterns, communication patterns. The ADL standard also specifies APIs for how the application code accesses these ports. This isolates the application code from the runtime infrastructure for threading and communications. So diving down into that, what are we actually doing here with Hammer? 
So Hammer system build process generates the platform specific infrastructure for each thread matching that thread's threading requirements. So you have your system developers, they say it's going to be, this is a periodic thread, this is a sporadic thread, whatever. And we generate specific to that specification, that infrastructure so that that thread is launched the way it should be. It also generates the communication infrastructure for each one of these port types and connections as specified in that model. It also generates the system build information, that platform level information. And then finally, it generates those application APIs so the, that abstract away all that platform detail so the developer can actually focus on capturing the behavior itself and not having to worry without that platform muck. You already specified it in the model. This just takes care of that integration for you. So in the case of SEL4, the platform specific details include things such as the scheduling infrastructure and the associated schedule, if you're doing an A-Ring 653 type of system. The threads go down into cam keys components. The communications go into cam keys connectors, and those are basic structures that the SEL4 framework provides. And then all the necessary adapters for all the ports so that then everything can talk to each other in the system. And again, all of this infrastructure is provided by Hammer based on the model following the semantics which means that your analytical results at the model level carry down to the deployed level. And so if we target a different platform, the application code stays the same. The resulting deployment should behave as expected, depending on the capabilities provided by that platform, of course. So as an example of ADL's well-defined semantics, for each thread, the ADL standard specifies different entry points, including initialize, compute, and finalize. You think of it from a real-time system. I'm launching something. I need to set everything into a known state. I'm doing work, and I might do teardown at the end. And these run during different phases of operation. For those compute entry points, so you're actually in the compute, you're in the operation mode, and there's two different patterns that are supported, periodic and sporadic. And periodic at the specified time, the system will invoke a time triggered method that'll then run the code, the, the, ap the application developer's code. And if it's a sporadic, sporadic threads fire based on events from other threads. So again, the runtime system handles all of that. It'll dispatch a handler that the developer writes for each invocation of, or each receipt of an event based on the scheduling model that the developer also specified at the model level. So it's putting all of that stuff together. The developer just has to fill in the, the templates that are provided here. So diving down a little bit more into the port semantics. So ADL threads, when they're uh, dispatched, they follow a well-known pattern for communications that simplify verification. Put another way, these patterns prevent a whole bunch of mistakes and attack surfaces that are common in other computational and coding styles, um, like look at everything going on on the web. We don't have those problems. So the key is behind the scenes, when it's dispatched, before we call that compute entry point, the infrastructure takes all those inputs and copies them or freezes them and makes them visible as input port variables that the application code that the user writes can see. Then it in actually invokes the computation so the time triggered, for instance, method, and that time triggered method can read from these port variables. And the nice thing is these are all snapshotted at that display, dispatch point. So you don't have to worry about things changing underneath you. And it can also write to output port variables. These are kept local until that thread completes, at which point the infrastructure then takes those outputs and pushes them into the communications infrastructure so that they can propagate. To make the developer's life a bit easier, as I mentioned before, the hammer generates an API for interacting with each one of those ports. And it follows a common get put type model in there, brings in port names from that model. So it's recognizable. What I put in the model is what I get in the code automatically with the data types as they are specified in the model and status information on whether the access was successful or not. And overall, this allows us to separate 
what I'm writing in my code from the platform infrastructure. And that increases portability. And it's also the magic that allows us to target all these different platforms with the same code and the same model. And I'll just jump in to say that the other thing that does is that that's what our code generation for the high assurance component targets that same interface. So whether it's user generated code or synthesized code from the, the higher up tools, they're all just targeting that same interface, the same API. Right. Yeah, thank you. That's so that gives us also that's that's multiple directions that you can put that application code in there. So we're also generating that threading infrastructure. So this is an example of that time triggered the skeleton that we provide and the user writes the application code. And here's an example of using that API to put data into an output port and then notify with an event that the temperature changed in there. So you're writing readable code. You don't have to worry about any of that infrastructure. That's again, all behind the scenes. So in terms of some ongoing work that's going on right now, we, I mentioned that compositional verification. So we can write currently integration contracts. So we can say at an output port, for instance, we can guarantee that the range of a particular value, such as a temperature range, uh, is provided by a sensor and it's from this low to that high. We can guarantee that. And at the other end, a consumer can say, I expect inputs. I assume the input is going to be within a given range. And we can use existing ADL tools, such as Agree, to verify that the guarantee and the assumption match so that I can integrate these. What we're doing now is we're bringing those integration contracts down to the code level. So Hammer's taking those contracts, automatically generating them, placing them in the code, and I can have other contracts that are on the, the module itself or the, the component or thread itself and bringing that down into the code. And we're using slang verification to prove that this actual code that the developer writes conforms to these contracts. So at the AADL level, we're guaranteeing that things compose. And then at that code level, we're guaranteeing that the code conforms to that contract. And Here's an example sh screenshot of our logic of verification tool that's doing this verification for us. This is built on IntelliJ. It is a fantastic integrated development environment. And now it's an integrated development and verification environment. And developers use this to write and verify their code as they're going along. So this is that contract that's brought down from the AADL, Hammer places it into the code. And now the developer can start writing their application and Logica runs continuously verifying that the code as written satisfies this contract. And you can use drill down tools to get additional displays to give you behind the scenes, here's what's going on for that verification. So if what you're writing is not verifying as you expect, you can see what's going on, debug that and do it live. This eliminates all sorts of developer, common developer code uh, mistakes in there. And it's just a blast to use. We're also analyzing the flow of information through a system. So this is an example of a flow from a position um, update and you're sending a status update out. So you specify textually this way in the code. And what our AWAS tool does is extract a full graph of these information flows from the model, allows you to visualize flow down filter and see what's going in here. And the really cool thing is now I can do a correspondence proof. So this is the ADL level. This is the executable level as generated by Hammer. And Hammer generates a topological structure of each of these levels, as well as the traceability information that allows you to tie this thread to this actual thread component in the resulting system and the connections and everything else. And we formally prove two properties. One is our flows preserved. So for each and every flow in the system, is there a resulting corresponding flow in the um, system as built? We also prove no new flows. We're not adding additional information. We're not adding additional flows at that executable level. Now, 
we rely on, in this case, this is where we want things like SEL4, which has that strong timing and space separation guarantee. SEL4 gives us the confidence that if we're not adding new flows, SEL4 isn't adding new flows because that would break the spatial separation that they guarantee. So what we wrote at the model level is what we're getting now at that component level and we can guarantee that, or we, we guarantee that the, the two graphs are equivalent. So that this is, uh, this was one of the case results as well. So back to you, Darren. Unmute. There we go. Thanks, Todd. Okay, so just wrapping up um, uh, our, our, our goals for the CyberSure system engineering program were to be able to design in cyber resiliency through our AEDL um, uh, modeling and transformation tools and analysis that we've actually met the requirements. Uh, we've put a lot of effort, as you've seen in the, the hammer talk, on being able to build what you model so that we build the system directly from a detailed verified AADL model, being able to target advanced formally verified um, kernels like the SEL4 kernel, you know, with uh, uh, the, the layered design of uh, hammer allows us to target other operating systems as if that's desired but to get the highest assurance system. Um, it's our position that SEL4 is really the best you can do right now. And all of this, throughout all of this, we're producing, using formal verification, producing proof evidence and integrating that in the form of an assurance argument that shows how and why everything fits together to satisfy um, uh, all the requirements. And there you go, we can take some questions now. So we have um, we have one question from Jeff Smith. Is slang using the Kestrel specware or is that a different slang? It um, would be. A, oh, go ahead, Darren. Yeah, yeah, different. It's the Serium programming language. Uh, it's a Kansas State thing, right? It's a subset of Scala, I believe. Yeah, subset that is designed for safety, criticality, and um, easy assurance. So there's a bunch of stuff you could do with Scala that this you don't have to worry about. So no garbage yeah. collection, um, everything's statically determinable. Great. Uh, I would ask uh, folks, if you have um, questions, please post them in the Q&A portion. What are, I'll ask the question while we're waiting, are there any um, challenges you see taking some of the uh, benefits that you've demonstrated for uh, generating code for SEL4 uh, with some of the other platforms that you're, that you're also targeting with Hammer? That's a really good question, Charlie. So the, the Hammer tool set, KSU developed that, it's extremely modular. So it's modular at the language level, the concept level, and the code generators. And targeting to another platform that supports strong time and space partitioning should be pretty straightforward. We have to determine what the connectors are available in that new platform and figure out how to transform our translations um, from that model level down to that lower level. So even with SEL4, we had to write custom connectors to make sure that some of the flows were truly one directional, right. which is what you're specifying at the ADL level. Uh, so we can work through those steps for the time and space partition systems. If you're trying to target this to a non-separated system, you you're, you're going to be limited to what that platform provides. Right. Obviously, we can't create, you know, those guarantees. Uh, but, but the idea is that if, if those kinds of assurances are available, we want to make them available at the AADL model, easily accessible and generate all the code. And so the, the hammer system is enforcing the AADL runtime semantics and providing the API that allows the user to, to program to that 
And then if those kinds of separation and communication primitives are available with you know, appropriate guarantees um, all the way down, then you can, your assurance argument will be able to say, yes, I said that these things were separate and they only interact in this way as shown in my model. And here's my evidence that in fact, that is true in the implementation. If your lower level um, OS or kernel doesn't provide those kinds of uh, assurances to build on, then your assurance argument will not show that to be the case. But, that, but that's the idea to show that when you say, here's component A and it talks to component B only in, you know, in this way and in no other way, we want to be able to show that that's true all the way down to the implementation. Bruce Lewis asks, can you speak to follow on demonstrations that you've planned? Um, so uh, this is also a good question. Right now we're having a lot of talk. Um, I mean, and, and Todd, you can address this too, uh, within uh, Collins and our larger Raytheon um, company, we have some uh, uh, IRAD efforts that are using the, the briefcase tools to address some other sort of uh, use cases that are interesting for the uh, for the company, and um, uh, those, you know, that's that's kind of the and, and we're also there's a uh, um, within the case program there's an effort that's targeting a, a subsystem on the uh, the F thirty five that's being coordinated by. Um, uh, engineers from, uh, from Galois working with Lockheed Martin to apply our tools to model and analyze and transform uh, hopefully this, uh, this system that's been targeted there and we continue to support them and with you know, updates and changes to the tools as, as necessary. But that, um, that F-35 demo and transition effort is the other ongoing uh, one that's outside of the company right now. Uh, Bruce also asked a follow-up question. How hard it is to uh, pick up the technology? How hard on, is it to pick up the technology? Depends yeah. on what you mean by pick up. You can go and pick it up right now on, uh, on GitHub. And we've, uh, like I said, we've packaged this uh, VM that uh, you can download. And that has, you know, all of the tools, both the Osate tools and then the Linux-based build tools that, that, um, that allow you to do the code generation. And there's a, a, a pretty decent um, tutorial document and some accompanying models that allow you to kind of you know, get your hands dirty by, um, here's a model you can start with, you can generate requirements, you can assert those in the model, you can transform the model to address those, you can analyze it using AEDL, you can do the code generation, you can run it on KeyMu, you can do all of those steps um, to to see how it works. Uh, so all of those things are available in that uh, VM and also just the individual models themselves are available in the, in the repo. Sounds like a great, uh, great resource. Go ahead, Todd. There's also a hour and a half tutorial from the recent Trusted Computing That's right. Center of Excellence Summit that dives into a fair amount of detail on both Hammer and then there's some talks about case and logica and information flow analysis as well. That's uh, uh, so you can, can search you for share a link weekend. to that. I shall attempt to dig one up. Yes. <laughs> I think if you search for the trusted computing center of excellence, then you'll get the most recent conference and that I think we'll have a list of all the talks with recordings. I, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, as I said, put those in the Q&A session if you have any uh, burning questions. Otherwise, you can also reach out to the speakers after, the, um, after today. Uh, thank you very much for this talk. We will, we will now break for lunch. I will say that the scheduled talk for 12.45, uh, it was on the original schedule, will not be presented, unfortunately. So this conference or this user day will resume at 1.15 uh, with a talk on system out to AADL with Occle validation by Jason Duran. So join us at 1.15 and uh, have a great lunch, everyone. Thank you very much speakers, uh, Darren Thanks. and Todd for your, for your presentation and for all the presentations this morning. Thank you.
Charlie, could you just clarify that's uh, is that one fifteen Central time? No, that's one fifteen. Uh, if you look at the program on the User Day website, it's the one fifteen Eastern time. Okay, just wanted to make sure time zone was clear. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sure. And I posted a link for the TC 